I've just done five hours off-road in a working coal mine which has been full of sand and dust and grime and as usual I've had my windows open so I am filthy. So the first thing I want to do when I'm back I'm going to grab a beer. The second thing I'm going to do is have a nice 38 degree hot shower out the side of the L322. Hello everybody, I'm Mark from Overland and Forward and welcome back to the channel. You find me in the eastern part of Germany at the German Land Rover Club's semi-annual event. Just done an off-road trip around a working coal mine which was fascinating itself to see the sort of machinery and everything that is on display. And I'll give you a sneak peek of what's in front of me. So this was created by the East Germans in the late 80s. It took two years to build. They shipped in a thousand people from Romania and Bulgaria. And it was used for one year and then German reunification kicked in. And they stopped using it. And since then, it's a tourist attraction. One of the things that I've been trying to do with this overland build is to get a hot water supply into the vehicle. And I tried the road shower probably about this time last year. Great device, a bit bulky. The only problem is it only really works when the sun has got on it and it's heated it up. So if you're in temperate climates, there's no a lot of heat going into that cylinder, it doesn't get heated up. So that got ditched. Now I've got a 50 liter front runner behind the seat water tank which is behind this frame and up against the seat, uh, the seat at the back. That is cold water. Clearly, you know, I fill it in with a hose, fill it up whenever I go on trips, or when it goes down, I get bottles of water and I just tip them in. Now, the second step with that is great. I've got pumped cold water. I can drink it because I can put some aqua tabs in there to make sure you clean it up. Um, I, can, I can do laundry in it, but again, it's cold. And so one thing I've always been looking to try to do is how do I get hot water into this without carrying around gas bottles? So there's something called Joe Cool, I think it is. Um, I think they're from New Zealand or Australia. But you need to carry around a gas bottle to be able to get that thing to work. And I was like, no, it's not permanent. So after a huge amount of research, I had to go back to Australia as most of this really good stuff is. And I bought two things. One was an Egon water hub, and the second one is an Equios six liter water tank heater. And so by putting it all in the back here, I now have on demand 38 degree hot water. So I can have a piping hot shower pretty much any time I hit the button to fire the tank up, depending on the ambient temperature of the water in the back of the tank, anywhere from half an hour to an hour for it to get up to 38 degrees. And then it's all temperature controlled because of the temperature controlled valve, which is on the Egon water hub. Now, clearly you don't want to see me getting naked, getting into my shower curtain. I understand that. And I don't have my blonde assistant with me either. So I'm not going to show you any naked film of me having a shower. You just don't want to see that. No one wants to see that. So this is a version one box. <clears throat> As most of you know, I generally build something, go away, test it, and then come back and say, you know what, I can do better. So this is clearly version one, and I'll show you what's inside of this thing. So all of this is made with 25 mil boxed aluminium frame. This is MDF, it's covered with stretch fabric. 
and this is the gubbings of what I built. So this is the Egon water hub and this is the Equios water tank. Now, the Egon water hub, first of all you'll notice that the god awful green has, has been replaced with overlanding forward red. And what goes on here is that there are two pumps inside of this box. One pump for external feed, so if you're out in the bush, you don't really have a water supply on board, or even if you do and you want a shower, you can run a separate cable, which is this, into a bucket, and then this plugs into here. And when you turn on, that pump, what it will do is suck the water in, mix it with the shower, so you will get hot water, but the water itself is coming from an external feed. So this one is the external feed. So that's in, and then these two are out. So these quick fit connectors were on the hub, and so I had to take it all off because I needed to run these John Guest fittings, and these are 12 mil John Guest fittings. It's all push fit. And you can probably see at the bottom down here, there are a number of other ones down here as well. So this tubing pushes into these connectors. And as you can see, the wiring for the pumps goes back to my secondary battery. So all of this is labeled up. So this is external in, out to the shower, and this is for the tap. So how does all this work? So on my Red Vision system, you can see there in the top corner is a temperature gauge. And what I do is I turn that on about an hour of when I need hot water. And then this turns on the tank. And you can probably see there are two lights on here for the tank. Green means it's on, red means it's heating. And there's a jog dial here that allows you to set the temperature. But I've got this on the hottest mode possible, and the reason why I've done that is because there is a mixing valve on the water hub. So when you do hot water from the tank, you can set this for how hot the hot water needs to go to the shower or the tap. So an hour before I want to shower, I turn on the tank, tank heats up the water. So when I'm ready to have a shower, this connector goes into here, and then I turn on this, which is the pump to start pumping the cold water from my tank, which is back here, which is a 50 litre behind the seat front runner water tank, it's plastic. So the water pumps from here, into the heater and then out through the shower head. I have a filler in here, so this allows me to fill up the tank. Originally when I built this load space I was going to fill it up through the other side but there's all my electrics are behind the back here so this is a stopgap measure and if you can just about see There is a concertina hose that goes from here to the tank. Now a couple of things, the tank itself doesn't have any baffles in it. So when it's full, which is, you know, 40, 45 litres, you don't hear a lot of sloshing. When it starts going down to the midpoint, probably about 20 to 25 litres, and you go off road, as I've just done, you will hear it slosh backwards and forwards, but it sort of calms itself down um, as best it can. I'm trying to figure out a way that I could put some sort of plastic baffles in there to sort of stop it from doing it, but quite honestly, it's not really that much of a noise. Now, as I mentioned, this is version one of this frame. There's a few other things that are in here. In here is a four litre air tank, There's my chuck for my air tools and also for my compressor. And clearly when I had this, this is for turning on my chase line. But this is going to get reworked because I'm going to put the 30 seat, seat in and take out the other two. This, these two seats I'm going to come out 
I'm going to put the 30 back in, and then I'm going to rebuild all of this to go over here. One of the reasons why is I made this just a tad too big, and so it goes up against my driver's seat. And so I need to have a little bit more rake on the back. It's fine, it's comfortable, but I probably made this maybe, what, four or five inches too big? Um, and I was going to put feet on it, but I decided not to do that. So anyway, this will get remade. This will go into a new version, which will be over here. And then I've got to figure out where the tank goes. Now, the reason why this is as high as it is, is because the tank itself sits just below here, but all of the fittings and everything for the pipe work and the valves sit probably about this much off the bottom. So you have to raise the tank up to be able to get all the connectors and everything in the bottom. If you don't know about John Guest fittings, highly recommend you use them. It made this so much easy. It was easy just to get, figure out the 90 degree bends. They're all 12 mil, they're all 12 mil outside diameter fittings. So you just make sure you push them in and you hear it click. And that's the important thing. So when I fired this thing up, when I put it all in about a month ago, you can hear the pump cycle through and the, clearly there was air getting in because it will keep cycling. And so I had a leak. And so one of these fittings, it was actually lower down, wasn't in properly. And so I was getting some water come through down there, which is why you can still see the racks. Um, I do have a filter on this as well. John Guest do filters. They also do the barb connectors as well. If there's pretty much any type of connector you could possibly dream of, they do it. But if you've never done plumbing before, and I'm not a plumber, this made this so much easy to do. And I probably built all this. It probably took me about two or three hours to do. So anyway, that is what is in the box. So how's this supposed to work? So I put in my shower. And then I drop this window down and around the shower head here. And then up here is my shower curtain. So this is a privacy shower curtain from a company called DFG Off-Road. They're in Jacksonville, Florida, I believe. I'll put a link in the description. I've used this a number of times. Number one, when the Duchess needed privacy to go to the toilet, we use that. And I have used it for a shower, although the cold. And I have used it as a shower curtain, but that was a really cold shower. So let me set it up and I'll show you what it looks like. And that's it. It takes maybe a minute. So I have one of these shower mats so I can stand on. And the reason why I pack this is if the last thing you want to do is to be standing on dirt. And so what I do, that goes in there. Now you don't need to peg this out, but it's quite windy in this field. And so I peg it out. Inside of here, it is lined. There are pockets for things like shower, gel, soap, all that good stuff. And at the bottom you just place the mat and you stand on this and that way you keep your feet nice and clean. So one other thing they provide is this shower hose connector. And if I can do this with one hand, basically fits into here. And there's a little grommet that goes on here to stop it moving up and down. And then I reach over. And you reach over. Now the only difficulty I've got is this arm is too small to fit this handle. So the general idea is you put that over here and because this is pressure sensitive shower head when you hit the button water will come out. When you turn it off it stops and the pump will recycle. So you can actually shower 
and save, well you can actually probably shower in about five liters of hot water, which I'm going to find out in a minute if that is enough for a shower, because I am filthy, because I've been off-road in the dust, and literally I've been wiping dust off my arm, so it's time for a shower. So that is how I can have a 38 degree shower, literally in the middle of nowhere, at any time. So what do you get with the Egon Water Hub? As you noticed, I've had a shower. You have the shower handle. You have this squirty, and this is how you can do your dishes. And this is long enough for me that I can reach through the wall that I have to be able to plug it in. And then you get the external connector that goes into a bucket if you need to get to an external water source to be able to suck the water into your tank. So it's really quite simple to be able to put this together. It doesn't require a lot of extra experience, push fit connectors, being able to cut things to length, 12 volt supply into the back of a battery or into a Red Vision system. It's all pretty easy to do. It's not beyond, you know, the basic skills that most of us have when we build our rigs out. So it's pretty easy to do. And like I said, to actually build the frame and put everything in it and then hook it all back up probably took end less than a day for me to do over a weekend to be able to make sure everything sort of works and, and test it all out. So there you go, that is how you install hot water system into your oven landing rig and I'm pretty sure I'm the only one with a L322 with an onboard water shower system. Could be proved wrong, love to be proved wrong. So that's it, that is my shower setup. I am nice and clean, I am nice and relaxed, I'm going to finish my beer, and with that, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.